guys, Chris Kelly here with FootageCrate.com. I'm going to be showing you how to make that earthquake effect you just saw. And I'm going to be using After Effects. So go ahead and have After Effects open. Um, if you don't have it, you can download a free trial from Adobe's website. I'll get you a link to that too. Uh, I think they make you register for it, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Anyway, I have my three files in here. My image, which I got from Flickr. Um, with a Creative Commons license, royalty free, all that stuff. Uh, but you can use a video or whatever. And I have my earthquake effect, and I have a steam effect, and I'll give you links for those two effects. So first thing I'm going to do is make a new composition, and I like those settings. I'm just going to say OK, and I'm going to drag in my image. And as you can see, it's pretty big bigger than the comp size, which I like. And I'm just going to center it. Looks pretty good. I'm just going to size it down just a little bit. S brings up the size controls. That looks great. And I'm going to bring in my earthquake effect. It's pre-keyed. So you can see that it works pretty well. And I'm just going to hit S Again, bring up the scale a little bit more. Looks good. Sweet. All right, I'm going to select that earthquake effect. Control D makes a duplicate of it. Um, that work if you want darker, but I actually don't need that. I'm just making a second earthquake effect. I'm going to bring down the scale a little bit. Drag it up here. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Cool. And let's go to layer, transform, flip horizontal. That way it doesn't look the exact same as that first earthquake effect that we did. Cool. So now we pretty much have what I used in that video, but if you want to duplicate it a couple more times, make it come all the way back and then all the way forward, that'd be cool. And now I'm going to take that first earthquake effect that we put on and I'm just going to drag it through the timeline a little bit. That way that earthquake further back happens first and then the closer earthquake happens. Sweet. That looks like it works. And now I'm going to select those earthquake effects and I'm going to parent them to my image. And I like where the image is at right now, but I do want to do a pan effect. So I'm going to select my image, hit P for position, click that stopwatch, which sets a keyframe, as you can see right here. And we can drag that around if we want it to happen later in the animation, but I'll just leave it there for now. And then I'll go back to the first frame. And then I'm just going to drag it down like that. So now when it goes through the timeline, you can see that it kind of pans down like it's following the explosion. Or if there's something underneath, like a, a tremor. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie, but it's pretty ridiculous and awesome. It also kind of reminds me of Street Sharks. You guys are probably too young to remember Street Sharks, but that show is pretty fantastic. All right, so now we have most of the effect done, actually. Um, it's pretty straightforward when everything's pre-keyed like that. But I do want to spice it up a little bit, so I'm going to bring in that steam effect. And the steam effect there we go, comes in from the side over here. Um, it's pretty light so you can barely see it. I'm actually going to just duplicate it. Make it a little bit darker. Maybe one more time. Yeah, it should work. So as you can see the steam blows in from the side. I actually don't want that. I want it to be coming from the ground like the earthquake is shooting it up. So I'm going to select all the steam effects. Hit R for rotate and let's just rotate it. Oh, about 90 degrees and let's scale it down a little bit too. There we go. 
and I'm just going to parent that to pretty much anything below it. Let's just do the let's just do the earthquake effect. And I want the steam to be coming up when the earthquake happens. And that effect happens right around there. Cool. My computer's being super jumpy because I'm trying to render three other new effects for you guys right now. Probably should have done this a little bit later, but you'll live and learn. Okay, so that looks like it would work. I'm just going to do... Let's just do two more duplicates of the steam effect. And I'm going to scale these down a little bit. Go to layer, transform flip horizontal and this one is actually for that first earthquake effect which looks like it happens comes on screen right about there and I'm just gonna drag those steam effects over and it looks like it worked pretty well alright so now I'm going to select all my layers in the composition Going to layer, pre-compose, move all attributes into new composition. Perfect. And we're pretty much done. But not quite. So I did have a blur effect on there. Um, so go to your uh, effects and presets tab. Type in fast blur. Drag it over to your comp. And I think I had it at 6 with repeat edges selected. And hit that stopwatch. That sets a, a, uh, a keyframe. Sorry, guys, I'm out of it. And let's scrub through the timeline, maybe like 11 frames. And let's just drop that blurriness back down. So now it comes into focus as it pans down. And then I'm going to add a motion motion tile and go ahead and select mirror edges output width let's just make it 200 that should be more than enough and what that does is it pretty much I'll just show you if you move your comp out of the way it duplicates the edges and it mirrors them pretty seamlessly so that way when I add that earthquake effect the the wiggle um, you don't get any black edges on the side. It's actually a really effective technique. So let's go ahead and add that wiggle right now. Wiggle Rama is the effect. Drag it onto your composition. And let's go to the first frame. And let's just set everything up here to zero. Because we don't want to start wiggling around until the earthquake actually happens. So that won't make any sense. Alright, so now everything's keyframed. Actually, I'm not going to change the rotation, so we don't need to keyframe that. And let's just scrub through the timeline a little bit. And it looks good. Set the wiggle speed up to 6, the nervousness up to 2, and the position up to maybe 3. You can hit U to actually see where all your keyframes are. And let's scrub a little bit further. So as the earthquake gets closer, I want it to wiggle around quite a bit more. So let's just up it to 6 position. Nervousness a little bit more as well. And the speed should get significantly faster. I'm just going to put 10 for now though. And then looks like things start to cool off. Right about there. So I'm going to drop everything back down. Position, let's just keep it at 1 so it still moves but not very much. Nervousness 1 and speed 3. And I almost forgot we're also going to add a motion blur. So go ahead and select that motion blur icon that looks like a moving ball and do the same in your switches panel and that should make everything look a lot more realistic and you pretty much have it 
Uh, you can download some really sweet sound effects from soundbible.com, although we are working on a sound effects site as well, so subscribe. You can hear about all the new updates, and I don't know. That's about it, I suppose. Um, yeah, if you guys make some cool effects, I really want to see them, so you can post them as a video response or just let me know in the comments that you made something and I'll check it out. Yeah. All right. Enjoy.